Now, I am well aware that most of you have not been to a movie theater in over a year at this point, but when you did, there was always that awkward point when you were leaving the movie, you were all excited about what you just saw, and you blurred out, that was great. But then your boss of the operation, she says, oh, but the book, that was better. Now, in the car world, we have something very similar. You go drive a car, you get very excited about it, you tell your buddies about it, and they say, oh, but the manual transmission, that was better. And in most cases, it probably was. However, this might sound a bit sacrilegious to you, but are there cases where it isn't? Considering it has been almost two years since you and I have driven the manual transmission version of this car, bit of a recap. Two-liter, four-cylinder, gas-direct injected, turbocharged engine. 275 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque. Now, notice I don't give you two different output figures. That's because the performance package, which was on offer in the car we drove two years ago, and it was on that car, is no longer a thing. The only output that is on offer is the 275, and that comes along with a couple of other things. Like, for example, that did come along with larger brakes. Those larger brakes, 13.6 inch diameter rotors in the front, 12.4 in the rear, those are now fitted as standard. Working in conjunction with that, the suspension setup is pretty much the same as well. McPherson struts in the front with a 21 millimeter stabilizer bar, in the rear multi-link with a 19 millimeter stabilizer bar. Considering what this thing is trying to be, and more importantly, the specific people that are behind its creation at Hyundai, performance figures are more important here than other Hyundais, VMAX, it's a hot hatch. It's not trying to be an RS6 Avant, so let's just press on to 0 to 60. There it's quite respectable, 5.6 seconds. Today is a lovely break from those 5,000 pound German SUVs. This car, 3,247 pounds, or depending on how you express your weights and measures, 1,473 kilograms. Now I do need to point out the transmission, weighs an additional 101 pounds over the manual with that. Okay, okay, okay. It doesn't feel like a four cylinder when you get to the bottom of that sweet spot, 3000 RPM, and then you go full taps, it pulls like a freight train all the way up to about 6,500 RPM. And yes, one can change the mode of the sport exhaust for it to snort, crackle, pop, and make obnoxious noises as you push it aggressively. And then I do have to say, now that we have some visibility into that 2.5 turbo we've driven from the Hyundai Kia group, which I have to say is one of the best engines they make. And this is where I have a bit of a struggle. As wonderful as that 2.5 turbo is, I do not think it would add anything to this package. In fact, it would probably take away from the wonderful balance that is this package. Now, something incredibly important here. Yeah, it's an eight-speed dual-clutch transmission. We all know what a dual-clutch transmission is. But what's different about this one, other than Hyundai Kia has designed, engineered, and built this transmission, this is a wet dual-clutch. Now, why is that important? Well, instead of it being a dry transmission, they have its own lubrication system specific to the transmission. Now, if we were to dig a bit deeper into the lubrication system, and I were to hazard a guess as to the benefits of a wet dual clutch system as opposed to a dry dual clutch system, the first would be performance. But there, you and I wouldn't be able to discern this today on canyon roads with one car you'd have to take it to a closed circuit, meaning a track, and compare it back to back, one car with a wet dual clutch and one car without. That said, I would argue the biggest benefit they were aiming for was a combination of that increased performance, but more importantly, with better reliability. Think about the mission of this thing. It's a hot hatch, and at that, one with pretty high limits. So yeah, it's gonna get abuse 
like you are seeing today. And by having the wet dual clutch system, the concept is to be able to make that transmission last longer over the life of the vehicle, rather than having to change a rather expensive part in say, 100,000 miles. Now, aside from the driving dynamics and some performance figures, there are other areas that are impacted by the change to the DCT. And here we have to go back to the mission of the vehicle of it being a hot hatch. Not so much the hot part, rather the hatch part, the practicality. It's the fuel economy, believe it or not, the automatic, the fuel economy is not as good. 20, 27, 22, that's down by one or two ticks in each one of those numbers. And then circling back to that theme of no more performance package, or really the performance package is now fitted as standard, arguably one of the most important parts of that package was the electronic limited slip differential, yes, to the front axle of a front wheel drive car. Uh, this, I think we need to go back to the canyons to understand really how that works. Okay, now that we understand the transmission, we do need to focus on one aspect that is not as readily apparent is something that is pilfered from the folks in Zuffenhausen, not Munich, odd considering the engineers behind this vehicle, and is hidden behind this button here, not the blue one, this one up here, marked NGS, otherwise known as N-Grin Smile Mode. Can we come up with a better term? What it is, is overboost like we have in Porsches. It raises the torque of the vehicle for 20 seconds. So here we are in N mode, hit NGS. We've got 20 seconds. And oh, 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 yeah, it definitely works. Uh, okay, yeah, you know what? Maybe it is the right name for the vehicle because it does put grins on your face. God, this thing is just so much fun to drive, but back to the business at hand, the more mechanical shifts. That's what I like about this transmission. We've driven this in those Hyundai Sonata N-Lines and the uh, Kia K5 GT on the same road, and it is a magnificent transmission. The shifts are not too harsh like a GTR, although I like GTR shifts. The personality of this transmission is what brings out that engine and it probably works to making this whole package of vehicle work. Now, it's not all puppy dogs and roses in terms of the paddle shifts. They work, they're aluminum, they're nice, but I am not a fan of paddle shifts, especially in a vehicle that's this aggressive on the steering wheel. Can we put them on the column and make them like the early R35 GTRs where they're almost the height of the steering wheel? That would really work, especially on canyon blasts or even track days. Then there's the impact of the transmission on the driving dynamics of the vehicle, and I honestly can't tell you that I feel that extra 100 pounds. But more importantly, it hasn't changed the driving dynamics of an otherwise wonderful vehicle. Uh, the steering, when you're in end mode, it is super heavy, and I love it. I wish more cars would have this weight of steering. In addition to that, there's really good feedback, and it's incredibly direct. Then there's all the planes of motion, and here we learned on Thunder Hill with a manual transmission car, there is virtually no pitch, squat, dive, and roll. I do have to provide somewhat of a usable note, the ride quality. It is incredibly stiff, even in the lowest comfort mode, which I'm not complaining. I love it when cars are set up like this. And one of the biggest factors as to why that is, the electronic limited slip differential we discussed earlier. Now, yeah, the car we drove up at Thunder Hill, the manual, that had the performance pack back in the day, so it had the e-diff. But here, it works better with the DCT. It makes the car a bit more forgiving. Uh, like, for example, all of those large German SUVs we've been driving on this exact same road, you can get out over your skis on that thing. You can hurt yourself in those cars when you get too aggressive. This, I still highly suggest driver training and car control before one tries to do this in this car. However, this one, you could get into it and not know it completely backwards and forwards and push it aggressively and have a good yet safe day in the canyons on a track or on mountain roads. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game of mine, the Options Game, with today's contestant, a car with three doors. This one, the 2021 Hyundai Veloster N for a base price of $32,250. Now that sounds a lot more expensive than the last time we drove this car, and it is. The car we drove at Thunder Hill was $28,575. Now keep in mind, the performance package was not fitted as standard. 
that was an additional $2,000 option. And also keep in mind that car was a manual transmission. So really the price increase from doing the math is about $2,500, $2,600. Now, let's press on to the only factory option fitted to this car, and that would be the dual clutch transmission for $1,500. The only other thing we add is the destination and handling from Ulsan, Korea, $1,005, for a total retail price of $34,755. Wow, this game is a lot easier when it's not involving a Porsche, isn't it? Now there is something else you and I need to discuss that has been smack dab in your face throughout the entire episode, and that is the seats. Oh, uh, they're magnificent. They're like Recaro-esque, or they're made by Recaro. I don't know exactly. They make a huge difference here. I would argue uh, that they make up a huge part of that pretty sizable jump in price we just talked about in the options game. I would say they're worth it. Uh, they are height adjustable, at least on this side. There's really good lateral support, both on the seat bottom and the seat back, mainly because of larger bolsters. And then something you will not be surprised to learn, considering who the chief engineer of Hyundai Kia is, uh, the little N in the seats, that lights up when you open the door. I don't know, some of you may be grumpy and consider that too much branding. Me, I kind of like the party trick. Then there are some things that I'd love to see changed. I did some digging on this car. It turns out the uh, KDM version has heated seats and a heated steering wheel. So I got all excited when Kumo booked this thing and it turned up in the hangar. I'm like, wait a minute. There's no heated seats. There's no heated steering wheel. And even that KDM one that had suede seats. This one, it's not even leather. It's like cloth with a very nice grain of plastic. Um, can we get the one from Korea, at least the interior of Korea? That would be lovely. It pains me to admit this. However, here is a case where the movie is indeed better than the book. You see, this entire package is significantly enhanced with the DCT, which brings us to the wish list and some of the items we already covered, like the size and placement of the paddle shifters, the heated steering wheel, the heated seats, some of the trim on the inside, and oh, I'd love to see a choice other than black on the inside. And oh, some good news. This is one of the few cars that is controlled by our good friend Mike E at Hyundai Motor America. You see, he is the one that makes the decisions of what trim and color we get here in this country. So you can imagine what my next request on the wish list is, and that is, dear Mike E, can we have a sunroof? in the Veloster and DCT. And that brings us to the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, all one word. Moto Man TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, should we go just with those things on the wish list or should we add other items to the wish list that Mike E can work on for us? And with that, before we go, I do want to share some news for you. Uh, since we've seen our good friend Mike E, he has gotten married, so huge congratulations to our friend Mike E. But that brought about a change in his life. You see, he used to daily this exact car, well, not this exact car, but a Veloster and DCT. But now that he's responsible and married, he drives something far more practical from the Hyundai lineup. I'm just gonna leave that right there. Till I see you in the next episode, bis später.